and welcome back to the Chronicles AFC Daily with me, Harry Simiou. Uh, this show is, of course, brought to you by the last man standing with Loser Paul. Apologies, I wasn't able to get any video out or podcast out yesterday. Um, I know I said this is going to be a daily feature and under normal circumstances, it will be, it would have been. But unfortunately, I've been extremely under the weather. I've got a nasty cold. Uh, It's right in the chest area, you know, those ones. Uh, And I can't seem to shift it. I'm feeling a little bit better today. Uh, I've just come off of Sky Sports News, giving my reaction to the uh, fixture announcement this morning. So on today's Chronicles AFC Daily, we'll be talking about that, of course. We'll be looking at Arsenal's first six games. We'll be looking at the season overall. And uh, we'll be touching on a couple of transfer rumours here and there and a couple of other stories doing the rounds concerning Arsenal players. So the Premier League fixtures for the 2019-20 season have been released. Arsenal kick off with a difficult away trip up to St. James's Park on August the 11th. It is a Sunday and I believe that it will be a 2 p.m. kickoff live on Sky Sports, of course, for those of you here in the UK. How's this one going to go? It's really, really difficult to say, isn't it? Because there's so much of this summer stretch remaining. Will Arsenal get the, the players that they need? Will Arsenal go out and splash the cash? Will Arsenal and Unai Emery be able to get the players that they've uh, identified as transfer targets this summer? And then on the other hand, you look at Newcastle United, who have a good manager in Rafa Benitez, but a manager whose contract is about to come to an end. Will they be able to hold on to him? That remains to be seen. Will Newcastle... Uh, be taken over by this Arab consortium that are rumoured to be interested. If they do, you could see a very difficult, uh, uh, sorry, a very different Newcastle United lining up at the start of next season. Going to St. James's Park is never easy for anybody, particularly under Rafa Benitez. One thing you have to say about him is that despite probably having a championship level squad for the most part of his time at Newcastle, he's always overachieved and his teams are always extremely, extremely difficult to break down. Not the ideal uh, opening day fixture, but not one that's impossible to win. It's not one that you look at and you say, oh God, it's not a Liverpool away, it's not a United away, a Chelsea away, a Spurs away even, or a City or anything like that. It's a game that is winnable, but it's a game that you know can be very tricky also. We then entertain Burnley at home on August the 17th. That's the day after my birthday. And Thierry Henry's birthday, as it goes. Uh, Burnley are the type of team that you know exactly what you're going to get from them. They're going to turn up to the Emirates. They're going to sit back. They're going to be physical. They're going to be, uh, you know, well-drilled defensively. And it's down to us to go and break them down. And I think that's probably, you know, whilst it's difficult to do that, and we've seen in the past teams like Burnley, can cause us problems, can make it very difficult. I think that's probably as good a first home fixture as you're going to get in this Premier League. Um, It's one that we should win and I'm extremely confident going into. Then, of course, it's Liverpool away August the 24th and we know what happened there last season. We've got a thing about going to Anfield and getting absolutely thrashed. And, and, you know, there's never a good time to go to Anfield, but I would personally prefer to get this fixture out of the way. Um... You know, I know we want to get off to a good start in the season and I know our waveform's not particularly good. But, you know, I'd rather we just get these games out of the way, particularly Liverpool away, because I expect Liverpool to push and I expect them to be as good, if not better, than they were last season. Perhaps not in terms of points wise, but I think they've got a real chance of pushing Manchester City once again um, and a real chance of winning the title and becoming the Premier League champion. So that's a game, Liverpool away, that you want to get out of the way early doors. We then have the first North London derby of the season on August the 31st. And I'm always confident going into the game against Spurs at home. And I don't know why. They are a fantastic team. And, you know, there's probably no logical reason for that. But I just feel like Arsenal are always up for that fixture. And at home, you know, on our day, we're as good as anybody. And I'd love um, to see Spurs come there in the early weeks of the season and get absolutely battered and brought down to earth. Because as far as I'm concerned... They're getting a bit too mouthy uh, down the Seven Sisters Road and I don't like it. So let, let's get that out of the way. September 14th, Watford away. That's a difficult game. Watford away is never easy, particularly in the last few seasons. Uh, FA Cup finalists this year, uh, unlucky to be beaten. And, uh, you know, 
any other year against anybody else other than Manchester City. They may have been lifting the FA Cup. Javi Gracia has done a fantastic job there and, and I expect that to be a difficult game too. September 21st sees us uh, play our third home game of the season and we entertain uh, Aston Villa who are newly promoted uh, to the Premier League having spent I think two seasons outside of the top flight but they're a huge club and they're back where they belong um, and it's really difficult to say what we're going to get from Villa because you expect a team coming up um, and a club of their size to you know do a lot of things in the transfer market this summer and build the squad um, you know they've got some good players there some players who perhaps the championship was a little bit below them, but it remains to be seen whether the Premier League is their level or if they're in that little bit in between. You know, like you get players like that, don't you? Dwight Gale is an, is one of those. Prime example. Kills it in the championship, comes to the Premier League and he's a bit meh. He's all right, but not quite Premier League standard. So interesting opening six games. It's not an easy run. Um, and, you know, I would have preferred a couple of uh, lower ranked sides in there than what we've got. But we do have Liverpool away. We do have Spurs at home. Watford away, as I've said, is a dodgy one. Newcastle away on the first day, um, another dodgy one. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Arsenal's start to the season was a little bit stuttery. Um, but as long as the signs of improvement are there, then, you know, it, it's really difficult, isn't it, to judge a season on the first six games. You know, we could go out there and pick up all sorts of points. So, fingers crossed, I'm positive. But the main thing about this fixture announcement is that it hits home, doesn't it, that the Premier League will be back. And I know it's still, what, a good two months away. But my God, uh, this month without Premier League football has dragged. So looking forward to getting back to Premier League business. Just looking at the full fixture list now, uh, just going to run through some of the other dates uh, for you to note. But please bear in mind that these fixtures are subject to change. The TV companies have yet to get hold of them. Uh, so that could cause some changes, some different kickoff times. And then there's the Europa League stuff as well, uh, which impacts us, which means we'll be playing a lot of Sundays, a lot of Mondays, etc., etc. Um, I've spoken about the Liverpool away game, 24th of August, Spurs at home, 31st of August 28th of September Manchester United away uh, London Derby against Crystal Palace at the Emirates on the 26th of October November sees us travel uh, to Leicester take on Wolves at home uh, December uh, looking at those fixtures West Ham away another London Derby December the 7th Manchester City at home on December 14th and December 28th in between Christmas and New Year's we're at home to Chelsea then you've got uh, January Manchester United at home on New Year's Day <sighs> always difficult that one New Year's Day uh, for me in particular uh, being a DJ as well and the fact that it is my brother's birthday on New Year's Day we're always a little bit worse for wear uh, but it's Man United we can make the effort no problem whatsoever uh, Chelsea away on the 22nd of January Manchester City away on the 29th of February uh, oh, we have a 29th this year. Must be a leap year. March, uh, we take on West Ham at home, Brighton away, Southampton away. April, Tottenham away on the 25th. Uh, huge game. And we always seem to have that away tie in terms of the North London derby close to the end of the season. And often that can be quite damaging. I don't like that. But it always seems to come out that way, doesn't it? Liverpool at home on May the 2nd. That's two games before the end of the season. Then we finish up on May 17th at home to Watford. Now, I'd like to bring you guys' attention to another story uh, that is quite big, in particular in the Greek football world, uh, which involves Arsenal's central defender, Socrates Babastathopoulos. There has been uh, a bit of a falling out between him and the Greek manager. Greece were, of course... Uh, beaten by Armenia midweek in an embarrassing home defeat which left their uh, Euro 2020 hopes in the balance and Socrates came out after the game and um, repeatedly said that he would take the blame as far as the players are concerned as the team captain it was his responsibility and that if anybody thought that he was not good for the national team he'd go home he'd be happy to go home and then stay away and then he was backed up by Gostas Manolas of Roma, a player that Arsenal are forever linked with. And the reports say that the two of them have been to the head of the Greek FA 
And basically, to cut a long story short, I've told them either replace the manager or we won't play for Greece again. So a bit of player power there. We're always talking about it, aren't we, uh, this day and age? And we're seeing two of Greece's most experienced and best players uh, going and kicking up a stink. They don't believe in the current manager and they've been extremely vocal about it. Uh, big story there. And, and it may mean that Socrates either gets his way and uh, Anastasiades, the manager, gets the boot. Or it could mean that he walks away from the national team, which may uh, benefit us as Arsenal fans. You know, it'll be another player that we don't lose to international duty. Uh, but a big story there. It's huge in Greece at the moment. And I just thought I'd bring that to your attention because if you don't follow Greek football, you probably wouldn't have even known about that. And a big shout out to Agona Sport who uh, report all things on Greek sport in the English language. It's a fantastic site. Uh, if you are Greek, which I know a lot of my listeners and followers are, then do head over to that website and, and get yourself subscribed and you'll never miss uh, any story from the world of Greek sport. So Socrates uh, causing a bit of a, an issue within the Greek camp or being part of an issue within the Greek camp. And it looks as though they're going to get their way and the manager will be given the boot as a result of, yep, player power. In terms of the transfer rumours going around today, according to The Independent, Arsenal are set to sign 21-year-old German Marcus Schuber as an understudy to Bernd Leno. Now, the youngster currently plays for Bundesliga 2 side Dynamo Dresden and uh, was first brought to our attention reportedly by Sven Mislintat, but he is available on a free this summer as he is out of contract. And with David Ospina likely to join Napoli, uh, it seems to make sense, doesn't it? And it would be such an Arsenal signing, free transfer, etc, etc. I'm not saying he's a bad goalkeeper, I'll be honest, I don't know anything about him. Um, but yeah, those are the reports uh, doing the rounds today regarding young German goalkeeper Marcus Schuber. Offside 2-2, uh, Arsenal under 23's right back has been linked with a move to Hamburg. He's actually one of the better players, I think, in that um, under 23 side. So I'll be really disappointed if we do uh, allow him to leave, uh, you know, particularly as we've struggled uh, in the right back position uh, with Hector Bellerin missing so much this season. You know, maybe it's worth giving youth a go. Maybe it's worth promoting somebody like that. Talks continue to uh, fly around regarding Ryan Fraser, but no update there. Again, Yannick Carrasco, lots of rumours, no update there. Jordan Veratu is another player that we continue to be linked with. And uh, we've done a little bit of a deep dive into Jordan Veratu with Chloe Beresford, a renowned Serie A journalist and Fiorentina fan, who uh, gave us some insight into Veratu and whether or not he'd be a good fit at the Arsenal. So check that out. That is available in podcast form and, of course, right here on this YouTube channel if you're watching via video. Uh, big thanks to every single one of you for tuning in again. I'm off to watch the Diego Maradona film tonight. Don't know if I've already mentioned that, but I'll be doing a video on that tomorrow um, because it is something I've heard is, is very good and something I'm really pretty much looking forward to. And uh, I'll be sharing my thoughts on that uh as part of tomorrow's Chronicles AFC Daily. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, smash that like button, and thank you very much for your continued support. Until tomorrow, ciao, ciao.